Good evening, dads. Welcome to day six of the One Habit Challenge. Boom, it's good to have you here. <laughs> I've had to say, my name's Johnny Jensen, which if you don't know that by day six, <laughs> my name's Johnny Jensen. Uh, yeah, so you're on the One Habit Challenge. It is brilliant to have you all here. 24 dads signed up to the challenge at the start. Everybody who signed up, basically, I start. I was given this as a challenge myself, okay? And it launched quite quickly. And I got 24 of you signed up, um, really at very short notice. So perhaps it's not a surprise. Um, we're, um, sorry, I'm getting lots of messages coming in. <laughs> Yeah, don't text me. Come and join us. Come and join us. Um, yeah, the challenge was to get the challenge up and running and uh, and really put it out there to the to the target audience, the people we want to help. For, for me, that's dads, dads, single dads, dads ready to kickstart their life. And here we are on day number six. Tonight's Thursday. Tomorrow night is Friday night. It's the like graduation end of the seven days party. Uh, is there going to be anybody on the call? I'm guessing probably not. Probably not. Tonight is about a reality check. <clears throat> okay. I want to keep, I want to make this really real. Okay. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about my journey, about how this all came to be. And the reason I'm doing this isn't, isn't for anything greater than reminding us all that the importance of connecting with who we are and what we stand for and why we do what we do is the essence of all our motivation, of all our habits, of all our goals, of all the things that we create or don't create. If you're not clear about who you are and what you do, then then what? Like a ship, you know, I've heard it on, uh, whose book is it? Oh, it's going to come to me. But it talks about you know, setting sail without without a map, without a destination, just leaving the harbour on your boat. Where are you going? I don't know. Who's in charge? I don't know. Who's steering? I don't know. You know, the, the likelihood is you're going to hit the flipping harbour wall, let alone get out to the to the sea. You know, let alone get to the other side. Um, it's it's that simple, really. Okay, so. Here I am, I'm in my office, which, let's just take this background off. Where are we? There we go. My office. So I live in a three bedroom maisonette, two floors. Uh, found this house um, six months after the separation, actually about seven months after the separation. I'll tell you about that in a second, but I have, they've got, uh, I've had an office in the other, in the other room and that's up until about three months ago, all my work and everything was done out of that office. Sometimes I go to a work hub and co-working space or whatever, but especially with COVID and things the last two years, it's really been here. Um, and my daughter and my son pretty much reached puberty at the same time, 12 and 10. And it just became really evident that they needed their own bedrooms. So he here we are making it work like this whilst I build up the success of Team Superdad to get my own team, my own office, and really expand and make this happen in the ways that I want it to, uh, to grow. Seven years, so 2015 it was when we broke up. 2010 was when it really started to go wrong. We had three miscarriages, all one after the other. Um, then we got pregnant with Rose. Thankfully, Rosie was born, but it was a hellish pregnancy. After she was born, um, you know, just uh, her health, my ex's health didn't really improve. And in amongst all this, you know, you can imagine three miscarriages, trying to juggle work, keep my partner's, my wife's spirits up, manage her drive to get pregnant again and what that was all about. At the same time, I had a 10 year old stepson and a one year old son. It was, oh, and by the way, the one year old son had uh, repetitive 
uh, pneumonia, which we didn't understand why. Uh, it took about three years until we until Rosie was born and she got pneumonia that we realised that there was some sort of fungal mould, not visible mould, but something was affecting our children. Within three months of moving out of there, both children were fine. It, it was complicated. It was stressful. The business was young. It was a, a, a marketing agency, a social media agency. I'd, I'd worked previously for 10 years in digital marketing. I was on the wave of social media, speaking at events, running training, launching a, an agency to manage clients. It was stressful. I was working out of a bedroom not much bigger than this with a guy who I found, Anthony, amazing guy. And we just kept going and making it happen. Then we managed to move out into an office and started to hire people. At its height, and I've shared a post about it this week, at its height, I had a team of five. <clears throat> we were working out of an old building in Maidstone, which I'd, I'd managed to secure and open up as Maidstone's first co-working space. We had a, a digital in Kent event. I managed to find a, an event organising company who wanted to, who, were, who were open to partnering to create this event. And we ran it three times. 300 people at, uh, at the third event you know it was it was we made 260 grand in our in our in our best year it was it was happening and yet the relationship the stress of her illness uh, of trying to keep the ship afloat I, I just thought if I can keep going if I can keep going we'll get through this it'll be a story I kept I started to keep a video diary of the whole journey uh, I was like, yeah, we should make a YouTube channel, which she really wasn't up for. Look at all the families and businesses now on, on YouTube. Um, and the reason I'm sharing this is because I work with a lot of single dads, but it's not just about single dads, because I realised what I want out of life was what I wanted before I got married. It was what I wanted whilst I was married. And ultimately, the upset when everything fell apart was because I was losing the thing that I really, really wanted. Now, what do I want? I want the same. I want a, I want a life that works. I want to fulfil my dreams and, and my potential. I want to be healthy. I want to make magical memories with my kids. I want to have enough money to have four or five holidays a year. And I want work that means those holidays aren't really holidays. They're just me operating in different countries. My family in Chicago and Florida and Washington, spending time with them. My family in France, my brother now in France. You know, just having the freedom to work wherever I want to work. Multiple homes, renting those homes out for retreats. Um, I'm a firewalk instructor. Really bringing everything together uh, from my personal development journey, from my experience as a coach, to create Team Superdad as a community where... When other people observe a dad who's part of Team Super Dad, they see a family or they see a, a single dad getting back on his feet. They're like, how did you do that? Like, where, where did you? Yeah, it's Team Super Dad, Team Super Dad. I'm like, ah, another one. You're, you're one of those guys. Yeah, that's exactly who we are. Living with clarity and confidence. You know, not being stopped by circumstances or feelings waking up with energy, going to bed with a smile on our face. Not that shit things don't happen, but having the wherewithal to deal with them, to plan around them, to anticipate and avoid, to build a community, of a, a network around yourself of mentors and advisors, people that raise you up, people that you learn from. And so that you start to play at a different level than you've ever played at before. And so much of that is what I didn't do for a large part of my life. I played at it. I worked hard at it. But underneath, there was so much turmoil, upset, stress. You know, I wouldn't say I suffered from anxiety, but there was a degree of anxiousness about having this thing like the perfect Disney story, the falling in love, being in a relationship that worked, being having the job of my dreams, all these things that I wanted to have, but I failed to realise that who I was being in the present moment, with all that or without all that, had the biggest impact on my success. 
And I don't just mean material success. I mean the wake up happy, go to bed with a smile on your face. I stayed in jobs too long that I didn't enjoy. I also didn't enjoy jobs that were actually going really well. I definitely stayed in relationships too long that weren't working, but I also put too much pressure on that relationship to work. I had to realize at the end of the day, I kept picking the same woman, which was in part down to this desperate desire to full, uh, to be loved, to be cared for, because my mum had died when I was a kid and I was looking for that nurturing experience, that, that safety, that, that, that cocoon. But all the time that I was broken, all the time that I wasn't secure in myself, nothing I did really had that security, had that comfort. The happiest time of my life prior to now was when I was at university. It was wild, it was fun, it was complete freedom. There was no responsibility, very little drama. I was totally in my own skin, enjoying what I was doing and who I was with. Real life, work, home owning, getting married, having kids, like real life was way harder than that. Now, this week has been about habits. This week has been about understanding the things that you do that are either holding you back or driving you forward. And can you do less of one and more of the other? Do you even know? I use that example from the Alan Watkins video uh, about the woman who had, she'd been to see him and he she was trying to give up smoking and he'd asked her to keep a, a diary of every time she had a craving and then when she was she was like well I don't see the point in that I don't I don't really have cravings then she goes back a week later and she's pissed off at him because all she can think about is bloody smoking it wasn't that she wasn't thinking about it before she just didn't realize it and that's what happens we walk through life not realizing what we're up to not realizing that who we're being in our relationship is having her turn into that pain in the ass. Or that we haven't got the guts to change our job or to end the relationship if after a period of trying it still isn't happening. And why don't we have the guts? Because we don't have a clarity uh, and, a, and a clear vision and momentum and, a, and the, the, the tools, the wherewithal to make it happen to be really connected and clear about the future that you want to create for yourself. Not living a life you feel stuck in, frustrated, resentful, blaming, bored, nitpicked, like you've given up your balls. For what? For the hope that she might be nice to you or for the hope that you might get a shag or that you go out of the weekend. Like, who are you being when you're in that bar desperately hoping to meet someone? Probably desperate. That word is probably the one, desperate. So creating the life you want, the connection to that and habits is about like Robocop or Transformer or Batman and his utility belt, Superman and all his powers. It's having the, the, the knowledge and the power and the people around you to raise your game okay we've talked about willpower we've talked about a clear reason why we talked about the people around you we've talked about substitutes and environment we've talked about what to do with people that are pulling you back and tonight i'm talking about getting real really telling one on yourself so that you can make the changes that you need to do, so that you can connect to what you want to do. There's an expression, it's a bit cliched, right? But what would you do if you knew that you couldn't fail? Like, would it be what you're doing now? Think about that for a second. If, you, if money wasn't an object and you knew you couldn't fail, would you be doing what you're doing now? And then that thought, that, that thing that comes up, oh, well, yeah, I really wanted to be, and whatever that thing is. It could be up, like I wanted to be a Premier League footballer, or it could be back, like actually what I really wanted to be 
was a gardener or a hairdresser. And I don't say back like those aren't good jobs. But quite often people will decide that they have to be a, a doctor or an accountant or something like, oh, where the money is, when actually their passion lies in something more creative. And perhaps if they'd gone and done that thing, not only could they have been as successful, but they could be a thousand times happier, a million times happier, a hundred percent happier. I hope as I'm sharing this, I'm really pushing some of your buttons. A relationship that's not working, a lifestyle that's not working, a fat gut that doesn't work for you, boredom in your job, can't run up the stairs, can't carry a kid in from the car, can't make love to your wife without getting out of breath, can't fit in your favourite trousers. Like, like where, the, where the fuck is your life at? And, and if all of that stuff you say to me, well, yeah, I've ticked all that off. Because many dads I've spoken to this week have been like, yeah, done the bad habits. We're, we're all good, thanks. I'm like, so what's next? What's next? Where have you set your sights? Who have you got around you? What kind of force? How much fun are you having as you strive to create that life that you desire? To fulfill your ambitions and your potential. Are you doing it on your own? Are you having adventures? Have you got your balls? This is next level. And this too is about the true vision of Team Superdad. It's not a place for broken people to hang out. It's a place for men who've got bold ambitions and dreams. who have got the clarity and conviction to go out and make it happen. And are doing it with people, like-minded people, that are lifting them up and that they're having a bloody good laugh with. Because that's the kind of person that I want to hang out with. That's the kind of person that is like a force of energy in the world. When you walk in a room and someone's like, whoa, who's that? What does he do? And that's not about how loud you are or how flash you are. It's just in your absolute unshakable com confidence and conviction that when you walk into a room, you bring that energy with you. So... This week has been about habits, but it's not about habits. It's about you, the rest of your life, the legacy, the role model that you are for your children, and simply going to bed knowing that you are the fucking man. So, I sent you a message this week, uh, today rather, I sent you a message today just to kickstart a conversation that could lead to us having a one-on-one -on -one to find out more about where you're at and what you want to achieve. That doesn't mean I want to sell to you. It doesn't mean that it's flipping pitch, right? This is a conversation about if you've got somewhere you want to get to and me asking you what it's going to take to happen. And if you want to have another conversation after that about how we could do it together, then fine. But right now, the conversation is for you, what happens next? Because I want to, you to springboard off towards that. I don't just want this to be a bunch of videos and a weird chat that you didn't participate in. I want this to be the springboard for you to go to the next level. And only you, wouldn't, only you know what that next level is. If you're in trouble and it's a kickstart, then that's the level we're at. It's about, if it's about going another step, then it's definitely about that. Let's go for some adventures. Let's go and fire walk. Let's transform your finances. Let's go on some holidays. Let's turn your relationship into the passion and joy-filled romance that it once was. Let's create magical daily moments with your children where you laugh and joke, cuddle. Even when you need to be stern with them, it comes across as love and full commitment. So that they're, they know that unshakably you've got their back. That's the kind of dad I'm talking about. That's the kind of team I'm here to create with you. So I hope you've enjoyed this little pep talk, this little rally cry. Tomorrow night is Friday at 6.30. We'll be having like a graduation, a passing out party right here on this Zoom. Um, let me know in the chat if you're going to be here. If none of you say yes, then I'm going to be doing some sort of goodbye, just like this one. Um, but... Don't let this be 
the end for you, okay? There was a reason you said yes to the One Habit Challenge. I want to know what that reason is, and I want to make sure you fulfill it. Message me in the chat or message me privately. You can flip and call me. Come and knock on my door if you want. Keep it real. Move forward. Be the absolute best you can be. Team Super Dad out.